welcome to the Wednesday Wonder. Hey, I was reading this morning, as I do over my porridge. It's a habit I've begun since I got back into eating porridge, and it's been very good because it starts my brain working in the morning. Although there are some who would say that's not so good. However, Inspiration comes to us in many different ways. And what I was reading got me to wondering. I was reading uh, an article on Esther Perel, who's a psychologist, psychotherapist person. She's written a few books on relationships. She's known as a, a relationship guru type person. However, she said something very interesting. Now, I've heard similar a little while ago, and it may well have been from her and I've forgotten who it was. However, what she said was, happiness is an outcome, not a mandate. Just think about that for a minute or two, because we're all about the happiness. We're all about the thing that makes us happy. And for some reason, we started thinking we could buy it, a new car, a new dress, a new pair of shoes, another new pair of shoes don't quite get the thing with the shoes. We've only got one pair of feet. But then I was born, I suspect, without the shopping gene. So there you go. Now, the thing about happiness is it's different for everyone. And as in the film City, Slick City Slickers with Jack Palance, when he says it's one thing, what is that one thing? I said, well, you have to find that out. And it's very, very true because it's different for everyone. What makes me happy is not entirely going to fit with someone else, perhaps. There will be similarities, but nothing quite the same, because as with anything else, we are all individuals, and our happiness is in, as individual to us as our fingerprints and our DNA is. The search for happiness we seek it here, we seek it there, we seek that happiness pimpernel everywhere. But rarely do we find it where we're looking. So that wondering, I suddenly had this, oh, wait a minute. There's a thing about fairies. Yes, take a slight jump to the left-hand tangent there. You can't really see a fairy straight on until they're totally comfortable allowing you to be in their presence. So I'm told, anyway. However, you catch a glimpse on the periphery of your vision, just a slight shadow or light that flips past and you turn to look and it's gone. And that's a little bit like happiness, because when you look at happiness too hard, when you even just have a passing glance there, suddenly it can just disappear like fog in the sun. It's a sort of a mirage, perhaps, the oasis of happiness that we look for. We can be wandering about in the desert of our lives always seeking this one oasis because we think we know exactly what it looks like, how many palm trees there are going to be, how many flowers and foliage, there's going to be this there, there's going to be that there, there's going to be a big pool that we can play in. It's going to look absolutely astoundingly wonderful. And then we see something that maybe has a couple of those things, but because it doesn't have everything, doesn't make us happy. It also comes into the, be careful what you wish for because you might just get it. Because sometimes actually having what it is that we think that we want turns out to be not what we thought at all. So what is it about this happiness, this seeking of happiness? Because as Esther Sorrell Perel says, it's an outcome. It's Something that is a byproduct of what we're doing, seeing, being, feeling. 
And that comes into the interactions of others as well. I'm very easily pleased. I have a garden that makes me happy. It also makes me very frustrated and confounded sometimes. However, when I stand back and I look at all those different flowers that are growing because I put them there and that I've given my energy to and I've nurtured and I've got a connection with that, that makes me happy. I feel that I've achieved something. I was watching a gardening program the other night there, as I do, because seemingly my neighbor says, I'm at that age. And it's one of those things that they said, what is gardening? And I said, well, it's also known as retirement, mate. That's how you know you're retired. You start to garden because you have to have something to do to give all this nurturing energy to men, women, children. We all have it, but we give it away in different ways. And giving it away can make us very, feel very contented, very nice, very light and easy. And that can be a form of happiness. Happiness doesn't come in a jar with a label on it. I am happy, open me up. It also doesn't come in the form of another person. Their presence can bring the happiness, but again, that's a byproduct of what's going on, the relationship, the balance between the two situations. So saying that that's the only person who can ever make you happy, not quite right. However, if that's what you believe, then that's what your energy will focus on. And that's where you will go. We're very apt to say romantic things like, oh, I shall never be happy again because of this, that, and the other. And there are many people who seek to be in love again and again and again because that initial oof, that they felt the first time is what they're trying to recreate and reconnect with. Not understanding that, that really does only happen once. Maybe it will happen again, but slightly differently. It's like that oasis. It's not going to always come with all the bells and whistles. There might just be some bells and a few whistles, a couple of bows maybe, some violins even but not necessarily the whole shebang. Because we're different people with different people. We've had different experiences since the last time we were in love. Maybe we discovered that we want different things now. And that thing that we were passionate about, that person, that job, that way of being, suddenly has lost its luster. And it's not that it's we've become bored with it, it's just that we've grown past that. And we do progress. And the thing about being in love is that the initial passion changes, but the love that is there will also evolve. And that's how we can manage to be together for longer. But we have to be ready to evolve together, to each one give a balance to the other. Otherwise, what's the point? One of us is not going to be satisfied with what's going on if they see the other one going forward and doing things that they don't understand anymore. Never wanted to do that before. Why are you doing that now? Or the one who's going forward and doing these different things is thinking, why aren't you with me with, on this? Keep up. You would enjoy this. Just give yourself a chance. However, there are so many things that can hold us back. And we were talking about that on the Therapist in Conversation episode 15 that we did last night. It will be out on the 5th of August. 
on YouTube. It's actually on the Facebook page now if you want to take a sneak peek. But it's all got to do with the fact that really, honestly, no one else can make you happy. And if you're happy to be with someone, if you're content to be with someone, if that person's still bringing you joy, that job's still, in you, still bringing you joy, if that way of thinking is still bringing you joy and sustaining you, then you'll keep up with it. If you're not, then what's holding you back from going forwards that way? What is it that makes you drag your heels or what is it that makes you run towards the new adventure? Take the left-hand turn or the right-hand turn. Take the path less trodden. But your partner is not so sure about that. I'm quite happy here. I'm quite content here. This is familiar to me. Then you start to wonder what it is that made you click in the first place. What happened to that firework? situation that was going on what happened to the pumping of your heart and the turning of your stomach and the wobbling of your knees it grew up it grew familiar and somewhere along the line we looked it straight in the eye and it went Socrates, I think it was, that said a life not examined was not worth living. And I think there's truth in that. However, we can forensically examine too much. Start to make things and start to make things up about what it is that we want or don't want or haven't got. I would be happy if, if only I had millions, I could be happy. Could you? Or are you still going to be the same person, just in a bigger place? Or with more friends around you, uh, ish, people running around and you don't really know them? Perhaps that could be what happens if you're not really sure about what it is that makes you happy. And perhaps we can never be sure because happiness is quicksilver. Happiness is faith. It's magical. And it's something that should be enjoyed and be aware of when it's happening because it happens always in the present moment. But you can remember a time when you were happy. It's a bit like pain though. You can remember that you were happy, but you can't quite feel the enormity of that feeling unless it was a particularly spectacular one. Then you really remember the essence of that happiness. But to put everything together again, to make that recipe again exactly the same, would the cake come out the same? Probably not. Sounds very depressing in a way, doesn't it? But actually, think about it. It means that we have more opportunities to be happy and recognize it. If we're not looking and focusing on one big splendid thing, one oasis away in the desert, shimmering away like a mirage, which it probably is. But we're taking the small things, the little things that lighten our lives, that make us giggle, cartoon about Simon's cat, perhaps, or something that brings up a nostalgic memory of joyful times. And that little kind of opening in your heart when it softens and it goes, yeah, I remember that. This is just a little bit like that, but wow, it's better because it's right here, right now. If the last 18 months has taught us anything. Perhaps it is that we can enjoy happiness, the feeling of it, the being of it, 
right here, right now, for the limited time, for that brief moment of absolute perfect joy. And then we can store it away as a memory. And when we're feeling a little bit down, we can bring it out and we can go, oh yeah, I remember that day. That was the moment that I felt really good. I felt wonderful. And because I felt wonderful, I could do it again. Because something wonderful is always going to happen. See you again soon.